I just don't have room for any more. I mean, I could ask Ange to ditch her bike and free up one more space for me, but she only has one bike, so that probably isn't the right thing to say to her, or is it? Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. So I'm excited about this one because I now have a reason to talk about the Velominati rules of cycling. It's number 12 I'll tackle today, which states that the correct number of bikes is N plus one. This rule is followed by most cyclists while snuffed off by most non-cyclists, especially spouses of cyclists. So let me tell you why I've finally come to the realization that I don't need or even want another bike and maybe neither should you. Okay, let's get to it. So today's episode has four parts. I'll start things off by explaining what the Velomonati rules are all about. Then I'll look at the pros to buying a new bike, followed by the cons. Finally, I'll wrap things up with my final thoughts on the N plus one rule. First things first, I can't talk about breaking the N plus one rule without providing a bit of background on it. I know, a bit of waste of time, but I've been waiting forever for a reason to include the rules in one of my videos, so there's no way I'm missing out on this chance. So either watch this part or skip ahead, but please like and subscribe. So what are the rules? Basically, it's the Bible of cycling etiquette. It's a collection of 95 do's and don'ts that every cyclist, especially roadies, must follow to respect the tradition of cycling and to look proper when doing it. The main author, Frank Strack, came out with the blog of these rules in 2009, which eventually got spun off into a book. It has a dual purpose, to codify roadie traditions while poking fun at them at the same time. Over time, the rules have almost morphed into legendary status. Some of them are inspirational and just plain indisputable truths, ones that every cyclist can embrace. Then you have ones that are good advice for anyone new to the sport or thinking of taking up cycling. And a subset of these which are specific to group riding. These are really important and ones that every rider needs to know. To keep our fellow riders safe, to keep the pack rolling along smoothly, and just so you don't end up being the one dumbass within the group who does everything wrong. Then you have some rules that aren't meant to be taken seriously, they're just funny. And the last group of rules are the controversial ones, ones that cyclists debate to no end. Some are just tongue-in-cheek friendly debates and others get quite animated. Where then does rule number 12 fall? I'd say it's one of the rules that's debated, but usually all in good fun. Every once in a while, you get a bit of a backlash on the Velominati rules. Some people just think they're outdated and need to be shelved. I don't agree. I think they are great and all of them pretty much apply today. Maybe not this one though. But I guess since I'm challenging the N plus one rule, I'm rebelling against them as well, but in a friendly way. First off, whether you want to buy a new bike or not is entirely up to you. It's not like you're using my money to buy yourself a bike, so why would I care? The whole bike industry business model is rooted on convincing riders that their current bike is too old, too crappy, or they just need another one. So I get it. For the sport to survive, so too does the N plus one rule. I'm neither irritated nor impressed with people that add a new bike to their collection. Actually, no, I, I admit, I kind of get impressed. But that doesn't mean you should buy a new bike or I should buy a new bike. And the flip side is that owning multiple bikes, especially multiple bikes you don't need or use, could be more of a hassle than any enjoyment that comes out of it. The idea that I don't need another bike isn't shocking. Like except for maybe my commuter bike, I rarely thought I needed any of the bikes I have. I just wanted a new bike, so I bought one. But the realization that I neither need nor want another bike is something new to me. Maybe I need to be hospitalized. So, in order to determine whether I should buy a new bike, I want to look at it from the perspective of a non-cyclist, like someone that will actually take a logical and rational approach to this. Because we, as cyclists, don't really think when it comes to the N plus one rule. We just accept it and do it. Or that's pretty much the approach I've had in the past. Kind of like placing the arms of my sunglasses over my helmet straps, not under them. I don't think about doing it this way, it just happens as a habit. You 
do that, right? Actually, anything I'm not particularly interested in, I can be rational about. Take regular old shoes, for example. Not something I'm at all interested in. So when my wife says I'm going to buy a pair of shoes, I can be rather insightful about this and ask some logical questions like, are you sure you want to spend your money on shoes? Or, you already have 30 pairs of the same style of shoe, are you sure you'll even use this 31st pair? Like, I can take the emotion out of the decision and think about it logically. But then she'll say something like, yeah, but did you need that pair of cycling shoes you bought last month? And I'm like, uh, um, yeah, never mind. So I'm going to walk you through my thought process on how I decided I didn't want another bike. In my case, the issue was whether to buy a gravel bike, but my reasoning can be applied to any bike purchase. A lot of what I say probably applies to you as well. All I'm going to do is weigh up the pros and cons on each side of the argument. On the pro side, I'll list all the positive outcomes to buying a new bike, and on the con side, I'll list all the negative ones. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about whether you should replace a current bike with a new one, because the answer to that question is, of course, damn right you should replace it. I'm talking about whether you should add another bike to your collection. Now, even if you don't agree with what I'm saying, when looking at all the different categories of bikes the industry is now supplying, you have to admit that it seems a bit futile to follow the N plus one rule. Like, unless you live in a warehouse, you're just never going to be able to compile a complete set of all the available bikes on the market. With road bikes alone, you already have five different subtypes. Then you have the other main categories of bikes. Mountain, adventure, utility and leisure, fat bikes, time trial, BMX, track, the fastest growing segment of the market, e-bikes, and lastly, one indoor category, spin bikes. So this is my situation. I have five bikes. I have a commuter bike that I use when I want to run errands around town. Then I have my cross country mountain bike I use for training and racing. I have a fat bike, which is the bike I use for winter riding. I have my road bike, which is the bike I put the most mileage on. And my last bike is my indoor spin bike, the Wahoo Kicker. So I'm happy to say that I'm compliant with rule number 12, but five is the cap I'm putting on the number of bikes I'll own at any one time. From this day on, no more than five. But if I were to add another bike, it probably would be a gravel bike because it's all about gravel riding these days, right? So let's now see if it makes any sense for me to buy another bike. Let's start with the pros first. The best reason to buy a new bike is simply because you don't currently have the bike that's needed to do the type of riding you want to do. The key point being that you mustn't currently own that style of bike and you have to plan on spending a considerable amount of time doing that type of riding. So for me, while I could swap out the wheel set on my Super 6 road bike for one fitted with wider gravel tires, I wouldn't. I'm just not going to use my nice new pristine road bike for gravel riding. So if I plan on doing gravel riding, I want a dedicated bike for doing that. But do I want to spend my time cycling on gravel roads? Um, not really. I prefer to be on pavement for the speed or either a mountain bike or fat bike for trail riding. But I'll leave this one in as a pro since it'll be a pro for a lot of people. Let's leave it in. The second pro for getting another bike is that it gives one bragging rights. Want to appear hardcore? Talk to people about the number of bikes you have. Nah, nah, that doesn't really work. But given how often this comes up in group rides, a lot of riders do think it adds to the hardcore factor. But just like nobody cares how far you rode last year, nobody cares how many bikes you own. Sorry to tell you. The third and only other pro I've ever heard mention is that by owning multiple bikes, you always have a backup in case one breaks down. Well, first, if you keep your main bike well-maintained, there's a one in a million chance you'll be stuck on a ride with an unrideable bike. And the more bikes you have, the harder it'll be to keep them all in top-notch working order. Think about it, keeping the drivetrain in working order, replacing tubeless sealant, replacing tires, bleeding disc brakes, uh, replacing wheel bearings. The work involved in maintaining all those parts across multiple bikes is a lot of work. That's it. Those are the only quasi-relevant pros I've heard of for adding a new bike to one's collection. Now let's look at the cons. The first con is the one I touched on already. It's a lot of work to keep multiple bikes in good riding condition. So some of your bikes likely won't get maintained as well as they should. If they're not maintained well, they won't ride all that well, and they won't be reliable. So you're not going to want to use them. 
Next, bikes take up space. Most of us have limited storage space for our bikes. For me, I'm totally maxed out for space at five bikes. I just don't have room for any more. I mean, I could ask Ange to ditch her bike and free up one more space for me, but she only has one bike, so that probably isn't the right thing to say to her, or is it? Next, you can't ride all disciplines all the time. Even if you have no other hobbies, do nothing else athletic and don't work, you still only have enough time to do two or three disciplines of cycling on a regular basis. Let's just assume for the moment that you've got the full arsenal of bikes. Grab your road bike and hit the paved roads. Next, switch it up and grab your cyclocross bike. By the way, if you don't race CX, you shouldn't be riding a cross bike anyway. Like, what's the purpose? Cross country mountain biking is next on the calendar. Oh, downhill mountain biking the next day. Oh, you live in Belgium. Take your endurance bike and ride the cobbles another day. Want to ride something in between cobbles and asphalt? Grab your gravel bike and ride dirt roads. Oh, cold weather has hit. Snow on the ground? Grab your fat bike. No serious riding today. You got errands to run. Grab your commuter bike for a spin in the city. Feeling lazy today? Grab that e-bike. Bad weather day? No problem. Hit the cycling pain cave. Great. You've got some use out of all your bikes. But the one you really like to ride, you only get to use once every couple of weeks because you feel you got to use the other bikes you have. That kind of sucks, right? Oh, and you're not putting many miles on any one bike, so you kind of suck at all disciplines. Hmm, maybe you've got too many bikes. Okay, I can't have a cons list without mentioning the cost of all this. If you have more than one bike, you've already dumped a lot of cash into the sport. Yes, if you have lots of money, buying another bike probably isn't a problem. But like any purchase, there's an opportunity cost in doing so. You could spend that cash on something else cycling related, like maintenance for your neglected bikes, or maybe a new group set for your favorite bike, or something to really bling up your bike, like these lightweight wheels. And while nobody cares how far you rode last year or how many bikes you have, they will care a hell of a lot about these. Yeah, there will be a lot of drooling. I'm kind of drooling now. Okay, let's stop there and let's look at the pros and cons side by side. Yep, I made the right decision. No gravel bike for me. So, what do you think? Is it time to put the N plus one rule to bed? Or at least set an upper limit? I'm okay with any number above, say, four. Send me your comments in the description. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe as it allow me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.